guys, it's Zilla in the house, and um, this is a movie review of Godzilla vs. Kong. So, um, I'm gonna go watch it, so see you in the next 113 minutes. Well, that was amazing because this is the second time I rewatched. The damn thing in. Let's talk about it. Whoa, 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 Zilla, why are you forgetting me? Like, what the hell? Sorry. Oh my gosh, why are you even here? My best friend's dad? Well, <clears throat> you do realize who I am, right? Y um, yeah. Well, if you don't notice, I am the king of the monsters, and I still remain being king of the monsters. And I'm here to talk about God, the new movie, Godzilla vs. Kong, the ultimate re rematch between two iconic monsters in cinema. Did you like it? Hell yeah. Whoa, 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 whoa. Don't forget me. This is also my franchise, too. Wait, why are there two of you guys? Because it's my movie, too, and it's Godzilla's. And I also like the movie too, besides one part. How about this, guys? Since I just you just finished watching the movie, well, why don't we just talk about how good or bad it is? Because Godzilla, I'm guessing you've seen it. Yes, yeah, so I saw it in IMAX four thousand times. How, d just don't answer that. Okay. Kong, you ready? Yep. Okay, let's talk about it. We're gonna talk about the beginning. Well, in the opening scene for Godzilla vs. Kong, we see Kong on Skull Island waking up, you know, taking a shower, scratching his butt, etc. Um, and uh, we also see Gia, who is a little girl, played by Katie Hoddle, Hoddle and he, she is a friend of Kong's, and they, she has a connection with Kong. And um, she makes a Kong doll and appears to be a member of the Eevee tribe. And she makes the she makes Kong see her doll she made, and then Kong sees it. But after that, Kong takes a tree, throws it to at the um, sky. But it appears like there's a force field right there, and that's when Kong gets pissed, you know. And then then we have the um, people at Monarch. We have a main character, and then just some random character. You know, they say how like Kong can live at Skull Island and the environment anymore is too unstable. But then a new character, who's a main character, Dr. Eileen Andrews, played by Rebecca Hall. Sorry for that. <clears throat> and she doesn't allow it because if Kong leaves, Godzilla will come for him. And Godzilla species and the Kong species had an ancient rivalry back in the Titan BC and all that days. And that's the opening of Godzilla vs. Kong. Hey you guys, let's start with the opening credit scene. So first we start with Godzilla, right? We introduce him. And then we see him kill the Muto. And then it shows Muto defeated. Then we go to Kong. And then we see him fight this big one, the Skull Kong. We see the big one, the Skull Kong, defeated. And then we go back to Godzilla, who's fighting Ghidorah. Ghidorah defeated. And then we see all those creatures defeated, even though I'm pretty sure they're not dead. And yeah. And then we get to the opening title sequence. Um, and this is Godzilla vs. Kong, the ultimate rematch since. Anyways, now that we see the beginning of Kong's movie in the opening credits with the Hollow Earth and the um, bracket between Godzilla and Kong. Now we can talk about Godzilla's story from the beginning. Yep, let's get to it. Anyways, we have this character named Bunny, played by Brian Tyler Henry, and he is the Team Godzilla human character. And for five years after King of the Monsters, he's been, he's been trying to figure out what Apex has been doing and what they're and he's trying to expose them for what they're doing. Apex, cybernetics. And he goes to this facility, Apex Pensacola, right? So, uh, blah blah blah, he like tries to distract the guy and all of that. 
and then that's when he Barney goes into the um, computer to see what Apex is doing. He sees this machine looking thing, he's like, what the? And then that's when we get straight to Godzilla and coming up from the shore and just destroying destroying the Apex facility, obliterating it. Maybe some people died and yeah. After Godzilla attacked the Apex facility, we cut to the CNN news where it shows how Godzilla is no longer a titan savior and that he's a threat to humanity. And it shows Madison Russell, Millie Bob, played by Millie Bobby Brown, in school and she sees the news, right? So after school, she goes to her home, listens to a podcast by Bernie, and she's convinced how it's not a coincidence that Godzilla is attacking an Apex facility, right? So she believes that Godzilla is only attacking Apex facilities, right? So she goes to a Monarch Outpost at Pensacola because of that, because of the destruction Godzilla caused, and tries to convince her dad, Mark Russell, played by Kyle Chandler, and tells her how Godzilla is not evil. He did not turn on humanity. He's attacking Apex facilities. And there is a pattern here to why he is doing that. And but Mark Russell doesn't believe him because he all starts to turn to the 2014 point of view of Godzilla is not a good guy. He is evil. And I kind of have mixed feelings on that because, as you know, in fact, I don't have mixed feelings because he had a whole story arc in King of the Monsters how he has to deal with the death of his son and has to and, and uh, has to deal how Godzilla is a good guy, not a bad guy. So I'm kind of disappointed on that. But yeah, so Madison Russell, and then goes, uh, he tries to get out of the house to like, you know, uh, find Bernie, and we have a new character to, who is Josh Valentine, played by Julian Dennison, and he is a best friend of Madison Russell. So they go on uh, inside their and, um, Josh's brother's van and just dip and find Bernie to like clear Godzilla's name you could say to prove to the public that Apex is behind something and and Godzilla is trying to find something and all that so yeah now we can cut to the King Kong side after Godzilla's attack on the Apex facility so we have Nathan Lynn, played by Alexander Skarsgård, right? He doesn't work for Monarch anymore because his brother died trying to go inside the Hollow Earth. And um, we have two bad guys, Walter Simmons and Ren Serizawa, son of the Ishiro Serizawa in Godzilla 2014 and Godzilla King of the Monsters. And they tried to convince Nathan Lynn that to like, find the power source into the hollow earth and get help and that's when uh well not help but that's when nathan lynn uh finds a way to um go into the hollow earth right and find the power source that has the same power as godzilla in the hollow earth right so yeah we get to where kong is so we have Dr. Le Nathan Lynn, right? She goes to um, Dr. Eileen Andrews, the play by Rebecca Hall, and um, convinces her that we, that um, Kong needs to go to the Hollow Earth. It's his home because Eileen Andrews made a theory how Skull Island is Hollow Earth come to the surface, right? So um, they use Kong to find the power source because Kong's ancestors might be from the Hollow Earth. So that is Kong's side of the part, yeah. And so we can find a uh, power source that has the same energy as Godzilla, so they can compete with Godzilla and Apex is going to weapon against Gojira. Now, since we are done with the story of Godzilla vs. Kong, let's talk about the human characters and let's see if they're bad or good. Let's get right on it. The human characters. Okay, I'm gonna be honest with the human characters. 
I think some of the human characters were just there to either die or um, call out the monsters, to be honest. And I'll give you an example. Um, we have Maya Simmons, daughter of the head of Apex, Walter Simmons, right? And Maya, Maya Simmons is played by Isaac Gonzalez, and she's only in the movie so, uh, so she can help her father get the power source to compete with Godzilla with the weapon. She is really there, and then in the end she gets, she tries to kill Kong, but ultimately fails. Characters I actually care about, and I really don't give a damn about the other human characters. Only the Team Kong characters and the Team Godzilla characters, which is uh, Arlen Andrews, Nathan Lynn, and Gio, and then for Team Godzilla is Madison Russell, uh, Josh Valentine, and um, Bernie. And those are the human characters I actually like. And I'm well, first of all, I will say that those human characters are more likable than the ones in the ones in King of the Monsters. And I already monsters. And I already liked Madison Russell's character in King of the Monsters. And I even like her character more in this movie. It's just I wish I uh, I wish I would like uh, see her trauma after King of the Monsters when her mom died. You know the Battle of Ghidorah, Boston. You know, you know she lost she lost like two family members. You know in the Battle of 2014 when Godzilla fought the Mutos, she lost her older brother, and then Ghidorah she lost her mom. I wish I could see more of that, but. I think there was a lot cut out. Anyways, yeah, Madison Russell, she is fine. Let's talk about, talk about jo Josh Valentine. I like him, but I don't think, like, I think he's just there just to be Madison's friend. But I do like him. I think he has a purpose, though. I really like, but yeah. He's not really important. Let's talk about Bernie. I think Bernie is very important to the story, especially when when it relates to Apex, since you know he was an Apex employee, but his wife died, and then he's trying to expose Apex to what they are secretly doing. Now let's talk about the Team Kong characters. So let me get this straight. I think the best out of the Team Godzilla would probably be Madison Russell because. I kind of grown on her King of the Monster and still like her about that character and um, Godzilla vs. Kong, so yeah. And then um, the my favorite character in the Team Kong would be Gia who has a connection with Kong, you know, a child, uh, and yeah. Okay, let's talk about my favorite character in Team Kong, Gia. So Gia is a, a female child who has a connection with Kong and a best friend of Kong. So she can communicate with Kong through sign language and Kong is very intelligent to communicate to Gia with sign language. And um, she was part of the native tribe which is the Iwi in Kong Skull Island. But her and her tribe got wiped out in the when the storm covered Skull Island, so Kong saved her, and you know she and Kong is basically Gia's best friend, and they both have a connection. And I really love the relationship between Kong and Gia. It's like very beautiful, and that's what I love about the human characters in this movie. Let's talk about Dr. Eileen Andrews, played by Rebecca Hall. I actually like that character, you know? She's basically an adoptive mom to Gia, you know, and she actually tries to be a, a respected person to Kong because um, she's been studying Kong for 10 years, you know? She's part of Monarch, and Monarch studies all these titans, and she's been studying um, Kong since, what, 2014? So, yeah, I actually like her. And I think, and yeah, let's talk about Nathan Lynn, uh, who was played by Alexander Skarsgård. Um, I actually like him, you know. Um, he used to be part 
of the monarch and he was um, a colleague of Dr. Island Andrews, you know, he's a geographer geographer and a, yeah. And he lost his brother trying to trying to go into the hollow earth in Antarctica. And yeah, that's basically his background. So I like them, you know. But I but I don't think it's necessary to give them more development besides um Maybe add maybe add to the scholars go. Yeah, they're not necessarily good for more development. Because I don't think they need it though. So yeah, Team Prime's pretty good, Team Godzilla's good. The only development they need is Madison Russell. Played by Millie Bobby Ryan. That's the only development she needs. Oh boy. This is the biggest flaw in this movie. And and um let's talk about Ren Sarazawa and I am so disappointed they did not give him development like what is what are his motives why does he work for Apex but not for Monarch like his father why does he want to help Walter destroy Godzilla what are his motives like seriously like like and how does he deal with his father's death in 2019 King of the Monsters like that, like, that just pisses me off so much, and I just wish they would have fixed that, but everything had to be, like, a lot of stuff were cut. It's like the studios figured that the general audience would want to see the monsters try to kill each other, then try to flush out the characters properly. I think what, what they have to do is, they had, like, so much time to do this, but they could have, like, equally put the monster fights. Maybe... Maybe see Kong fight a lot of monsters in the Hollow Earth, right? Give it more equal. Like, there's equal monster action and equal human screen time. So you can make it a good film, you know? I will give the human characters a 9 out of 10. And I will give the movie story and plot a 9 out of 10 as well. Now, let's talk about the monsters. You know what? I'm not going to say anything because the monsters are phenomenal. The action is phenomenal. And all the fights is phenomenal too. One of the best parts in this movie is, one, seeing Godzilla winning because I was obviously Team Godzilla. And then, the second best part is... Mechagodzilla, the weapon Apex was building and the thing Godzilla was trying to find to stop. Which also proves that Godzilla was not the villain the whole time. And the best part in this movie was Godzilla and Kong teaming up. That was the most badass scene I've ever seen in the Monster Reverse. And yeah, it was so epic. So I will give the monsters a 10 out of 10. Now, it's time for my overall rating of the movie. Tell us what the rating is. Tell us, please, please, I'm begging you. Better tell us or else I will murder you. Okay, guys, chill, chill, chill. I'm going to give Godzilla vs. Kong a 9.5 out of 10. To be honest... If that's a pretty good grade. Yes, I definitely agree. But what are your criticisms for? There was not enough human development. In fact, there was no human de development. Like, I feel like for Team Godzilla, they, it was necessary, like I said in in the previously in this video. For Team Kong, there is no development. There is no development necessary because I wanted Madison Russell's development for her mom's death in King of the Monsters, and I wanted Ren Serizawa's character to be flushed out. Like, he's the son of Dr. Ishiro Serizawa. Like, we need to know his motives, why he's working for Apex, not why he's not following in his father's footsteps, and why he wants to kill Godzilla. That's my criticisms. Yeah, I can agree on the same. But now that we're, now that we're done with this movie review, Kong, do you want to go out for some sushi? Sure, man. Wait, since when were you guys friends? You guys always hated on each other ever since 1962. Well, after we fought in the aircraft carrier in Hong Kong, and after we teamed up, we became friends. Yeah. 
even though I will definitely win the fight. Oh, shut up. Whatever. Wanna go? Yeah, let's go. That's all for this video today. See ya.